Freedom is calling on the other side of the wind So we keep on walking, though it tears through our skin Feeling like a warrior that's not afraid to bleed The fight inside's in all of us, so we won't concede You can't hold us down Hey everybody, welcome to beautiful Las Vegas. I'm Tony Leo. Uh, I got my notes ready to go on this video. I got my new glasses. Don't laugh at me. Sooner or later, you're all going to be wearing them. All right? So here we go. Okay. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you 10 principles and concepts of advantage dice control that will make you a lot of money. I categorize craps players two ways. The first one, number one, we're going to call them a math wizard, okay? They're easy to spot because they're going to make pass line bets with full odds, all right? They're going to make come bets. They're going to stay away from the field bets, the hop bets, and the horn bets because they're sucker bets and they have a high house edge. They track the long-term calculations. They read all the experts' books out there that are 30 years old. They make bet bets that are mathematically safe versus what they're throwing, okay? So, and they have no clue on how to bet. They don't believe in the trends of the dice, uh, and, and that's what kills them, okay, are the trends, and they lose more than not. Listen up. The math of the game tells you what should be happening playing long term, not what is happening right now, okay? It's a big difference. In my opinion, you're learning to lose. Okay, which brings us to player number two. Player number two, uh, the advantage dice control player, which is what this video is about. Okay, let's get started. Number one, you got to have a predatory mindset, all right? You remember the song, Eye of the Tiger? Well, it means you're focused, you're calm, and you're confident, and you're going for the kill. The kill are your wins. Okay? If you can't control what you think, you can't control what you do. Think like a winner. Be decisive. Know every move you're going to do. All right? Most players are conditioned to lose before they get to the casino. All right? How many times have you heard this? If I lose 200, I'm gone, or I brought what I could afford to lose. Well, you think about that. What's going to happen to that guy? Okay? If, you, if you think like a loser, guess what happens? Think like a winner. Have a predatory mindset. All right? Okay, let's go to number two. All right, so let's go to number two, and this is gonna be a little difficult, okay, for you guys. I live in Vegas, so number two is play solo or with your team, okay, which is easy for me to do because I'm in Vegas, all right? But here's what you gotta do. I play early a.m., all right? Uh, or 12 noon if I know they're going to open up a new table. I can go to Red Rock at 12 noon right when they're opening up. The majority of the time, I'm playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm at the table off days. I'm there early, okay? And the big factor playing solo 
is you get the dice right back. That's a big advantage. Whether I roll three times or 30 times, okay, it doesn't matter. It's a big advantage. Plus, playing the way we do, I only need one or two rolls to get back ahead of the game. All right, so if you have the capability, play solo. Get there early, know when they're going to open up a table. All right, the second part of that is to play with your team. Okay, another great way to, to play. A team spreads the risk by smoothing out the peaks and the valleys. A team sticks to the game plan imposing self-discipline. Team members help each other, okay? You'll be surprised how much better you'll feel, how much easier it is to control yourself. When you can avoid the crowds, the noise, and all the bullshit of the, the other players, your playing performance is going to improve big time, okay? All right, so now let's go to number three, okay? You have to play with a purpose to win, all right? Not to break even, uh, not for entertainment, not for comps, okay? You gotta know what your SWR is, not your SRR. I don't, I don't really care about seven to rolls ratio. S uh, SWR, your sevens to win ratio. How many times did I win before I hit a seven? Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here, one, two, three, four, five. Here, three, and here, four, and I'm still shooting, okay? Know what your SWR is. It's not always about the long rolls. It's what you do with the short rolls that count. Also, the on-axis, off-axis, uh, all about that, it's a little overrated. You're going to probably be close to 50-50, maybe 60-40. That doesn't matter. As long as you know what to look for when you're rolling the dice, you play into your advantage, okay? You learn how to read your dice. It's going to create a picture here that'll just pop out at you. I created advantage dice control in my methods, not for the purpose of entertainment, but for the explicit purpose of making money, period. I told everybody years ago that advantage dice control was going to be a major influence in today's craps game, and it is and it's easy to do. I play exactly what I teach. Okay, let's do number four. Number four is know how to bet. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna put my notes here because I wanna show you guys something, but it's not always, it's not always about the long roll. You can be the best dice setter in the country, but if you don't know how to bet, you're screwed, okay? Playing craps, there's four main ways to bet. Let's go over them, okay? You can flat bet or same bet. But however, understand if you flat bet or same bet and you seven out, it's gonna take, depending on how you're playing, another two to five wins just to break even, okay? So that, that's one way to play. It depends on you, okay, what you're, uh, what you're capable of doing with your bankroll. So you got the flat bet or some call it same bet, okay? You can do an up as you win. And up as you win could be your collect and press. As I'm winning here, I'll collect, put it in the rack, then the next one I'll press something, okay? You can do, for example, a two win parlay on your field. If you win here, you're gonna win $10. Now you'll have a $20 bet, you let it ride. That's a two win parlay. So now when you win for your $10 bet, you're winning $30. You won 10, then 20, correct? Okay, so that's a two win parlay or you can collect and press, okay? So, and you also can use to press your gimme money. So for example, if I'm here on my six, I'm gonna get paid $35. I can go ahead and put some money in the rack and then press the other numbers with the rest of it however I wanna do it. But that's an up as you win. You can collect and press, you can do a two win parlay, you can use your gimme money to, to expand on your capabilities, all right? Okay. So the next one I want to talk about is an up as you lose. Not a martingale. Understand something. If you're, if, if you're still using the term martingale or playing with it, you're in a losing proposition, all right? Because first of all, it was devised where you can go up as high as you want because there weren't any limits on the table, but the casinos put a stop to that, all right? So you have limits now. And on a, on a typical martingale, you're doubling your bet to win only one unit. Well, that's not the way to do it, okay? So, we know where to start and where to finish, okay? And we, at any level, if, we, if we're using an up as you lose, on any level when we win, 
we're winning much more than one unit. So your profit is increased, you know, quite a bit, okay? So, uh, example, uh, let's do the six and the eight here for a minute. Let's say, let's say we're just going to do a $12, six and eight. Okay, let me get some ones. Let me get some ones here. All right, we're going to do a $12, six and eight. Whoops, need another one. Okay, so we got a $12, six and eight, boom, we seven out, all right? So now what we wanna do is we wanna go up a level to level two. So now we got $24 invested here. So if we go and we take that now to 30, we go up a level, let's say, we're gonna make 35 on there, but we're gonna have to minus the 24 that we lost, all right? So what is that? That's uh, an $11 profit, okay, so we got an $11 profit on that, 35 minus 24, that's correct, all right. So that could be how you do your up as you lose, and you can do that pretty much on any bet. You can do it here too, if you got a $10 field and you lose, take it to 15 or 20, whatever you want to do. Now when you win, you'll win 15 minus the 10, you're up $5, and you start over again at your lowest level, and at your lowest level is where you would do your collect and press, okay? That's where you make your money. If you're not pressing up, you're really not making any money, okay? So learn how to work the up as you lose. <clears throat> then the last one is the regression, okay? So you can start high. So let's say you start at a $30 unit and you win. Same thing the opposite way. You're going to win $35. Now you drop it down to 12 each for 24 you can't lose. You're going to win $11. Now you start collecting and pressing and doing what you have to do. Okay? So there's four major ways to bet. Flat bet, the up as you win, the up as you lose, and the regression. That's about the extent of it or a combination of all of those. Okay? So let me give you some examples here of how I might play. Okay? Here you got the 4 and 10 already set up. I might, because I like to cover every number, I might come in here with the 4 through 10 and do a horn bet. Now I have 30 ways to win, uh, 30 ways to win, 6 ways to lose. It's 5 to 1 in my favor on every roll of the dice. Okay? So if I win here, obviously I'm going to lose my 4 bucks here. So if I'm going to win 35 minus 4, that's going to be my profit on that. Okay? It's going to be, what is it going to be? $31. Okay, so, and you can play this tying it in to your base bet or independently. In other words, if I lose this, I can go up a level here as well and do the up as you lose. Or in this case, because of the denomination, I can just do same bet, same bet, or flat bet. I can go up a level here and make this the same. I don't have to go up here, okay? So, but I have every number covered, all right? The other way I'll play is I'll do it the opposite, okay? I'll do the six and the eight for $30, and I'll have a $10 field bet. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna win 35 here, minus 10, so I'm gonna get a green chip on every win, or $10 if it's the field. Here, I have it tied in to my base bet of six and eight, and on my six and eight, I decide if I'm going to do the same bet, if I'm going to bet up as you win, if I'm going to bet up as you lose, or if I'm going to regress, okay? In this case, the way I play, I pretty much use an up as you lose because when I'm playing the six and the eight, it would, I'd almost have to go .7 out five times without throwing one, six, or eight to lose. Ain't going to happen, okay? Now, the field, you can tie in or play independently. In other words, here I have it tied in. So I'll lose 10, I'll only win 25. If I want to use it independently of its own, I'd win 35 here, lose here. Now I go up to here. So I'm, I'm at level one here, but I went up another level on my field to recoup that. Either way, they're both good options. All these betting options are there for you. It just depends on your temperament. Okay, if I'm playing this, 
on my first win, if it's a six or eight, I'll win 35 minus this, I'll put it on the five. This way now, I have every number covered. I have the five, six, eight in the field. Again, I have 30 ways to win, six ways to lose. It's five to one in my favor on every roll of the dice. And I'm all about getting in and out, okay? Hit it and get it, that's what I wanna do. So that is a couple ways to do it. Another thing I'll do is I'll incorporate, this would be my base bet, let's say. The six, eight in the field is my base bet. I include the field in everything I do for the most part, unless it's the four through 10 in the horns. It's a little different. I can still do the four through 10 in the field though too. Okay, <clears throat> so here you got the hot bets now. That, that, th this is an opportunity that'll pop up. I don't make this every bet. This I do. Here is when a pitcher emerges, when I'm in my dice roll, I can see what's happening, okay? So for example, on my original hop here, based on what I threw earlier, let's just check it out, okay? I have a win here on the 6-4. I have a win here on the 3-1. I have a win here on the 4-1, all right? Then I lost a little bit, I, came, I lost one, two, three, four, and on my fifth roll, I hit it here. So I would have won that bet at a level five increment, which would have made me a lot of money, okay? I wanted it here again on the 3-1. I want it here on the 6-1. Again on the 4-1, boom, I lose. Okay, that's one, two, and here's another one. So I won level two here. Again, then I go to level one, I win, and I win, and I'm still shooting. So on the hops, on these 20 rolls, I won one time, two times three times, uh, where am I here, where's this one, four times, four times, five times, six, seven, eight, I won nine times on my hop bets in 20 rolls, all right, let's take the field, I won here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, eight times on my field. And depending on the levels you have when you're working with, you're up as you lose, okay? That's where the magic is, and that's what I do. But in any event, playing these 20 rolls just on my bets, I mean, what is it? Let's do the six and eight. There's one win. Make it easy this way. Okay, there's two wins. There's three wins. There's four wins. I got four wins on the six and the eight. Then I had nine wins on my hop. That's 13 wins. And then on the field, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins. So 21 wins on 20 rolls. That's the power of multiple uh, wins, okay? Which is number five strive for multiple wins, okay? This is key, all right? You wanna see your advantage and you wanna play it. You wanna play your numbers, your field as your base bet, and then your horns and your, your, your hops and your horns uh, when, when the opportunity arises. When you learn how to recognize your signature numbers, your dominant momentum, and your betting under favorable conditions, you're gonna learn how to win consistently and you'll win more in less time. That is a big advantage, okay, like I shared with you, all right? Now, talking about dominant momentum, what I mean when I say dominant momentum, I get a lot of emails on this, is simply the trends, okay? So what are the trends? And, when I'm, and I predominantly do that with the hops. For example, here, you got to be able to see a picture, okay? So when I do the original hop, it's because I'm seeing a one or a six on one of my rolls, okay? When you can do that, when you can paint a picture, that's what it's all about, okay? One or a six. Let me tell you something about the one and the six. This is gonna blow your mind. I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but I'm gonna shoot it at you. The one and the six, are the, the two numbers that you get paid on the most. Let me explain. You can't hit the double two or the double 12 or triple 12 without a one or a six. You cannot make, you cannot make one horn win 
without a one or a six. And this perfect for my original hop. I can bet anything with a six on it. I can bet anything with a one on it. I can bet the high. Okay. And I can bet the low. I'm going to do a tape on this in the near future and show you how to make an income every day without even making a, a, a place bet number. Simply by doing one roll bets, the field, uh, the horns, and the hops. Okay, But this will paint a picture. So let's just say I'm playing this. All right, I won here on my high, on the eight. I won another on the high. I lost two here. Okay, Then I got a four here, so I won here, but I lost here. So you see what you're doing? You're winning someplace for the most part. Okay, the, obviously the seven will beat you, you know, but there's a lot of options you have with this. So strive for multiple wins, okay? All right, number six, we follow the dice, not the math, okay? Let me set these up here real quick. I think it was like this, I don't know. Anyway, okay, we follow the dice, not the math. My game begins with my dice roll and ends with my dice roll, okay? So I can care less uh, about long term or I can care less about the house advantage. What do I care that a hop has a 13% house edge when I'm, when I'm just I'm throwing them, okay? I mean, what are you going to do, all right? So when I just, you know, it doesn't matter when I'm throwing like this, okay, and, it, and it's all predicated, obviously, on how you set your dice and what you need to look for. That you're getting paid 15 to 1, if it's a hard way, if it's a hard way, you're getting paid 30 to 1. Here, 15 to 1 on the hard way is 30 to 1, okay? Learn to read your dice. We bet on the trends, which is called our dominant momentum, that occurs in the short, in the short term. Remember something here. Your numbers have to roll for you to win. So why would you keep playing the six and the eight because it's safe when it hasn't rolled for five times, but your nine, you threw two of them, okay? So play the nine. All right, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. So play what the dice are giving you. Learn how to read your dice, okay? <clears throat> All right, number seven. There are no bad bets on the table. I'm talking about your field bets your horn bets, and your hop bets, okay? With advantage dice control, these are going to pop out at you. You're going to see your advantage, and you're going to jump all over it. When I created my Super 7 hop system back in 2015, everyone thought I was an idiot. Today, those same people are sending me testimonials. There's now a lot of players, I mean a lot, look at YouTube, working the hops, the field bets, and adding more chips to their rack. Remember, they're only sucker bets if you can't throw them. Okay? If you're a math wizard, you're never going to make these bets, and that's a shame. If you're an advantage, uh, advantage player and you're setting your dice, you're able to read your dice, and you're betting properly, play these all day long. Okay? So, for example, let's talk about the field. There's been a lot recently on, for, on some of the forums about the field bet. Everybody's telling me, well, Tony, you got uh, 16 ways to win, but you got 20 ways to lose. Okay. Let's, let's, let's just go with that. It doesn't matter. If you are using an up-as-you-lose method here, a random shooter is going to throw a field roll on average every 2.25 times. Okay? We, because of what we do, we should do better than that. And we're getting paid double or double and triple on the 2 and the 12. So you should do better. So. Again, include, if you're a dice setter, I would never do this random, but if you're a dice setter, look to capitalize and add more profits in your rack by adding the field, the horn bets, and the hop bets, okay? So, again, you can, and you can pick your betting method that you want to use. You can, you can use a two-win parlay here. You can do same bet. You can do an up, you can regress. You can do whatever you want on any of these, okay? And you don't necessarily have to bet the same way on every method you do. All right, so there you go. Okay, number eight, no scared money. You've all heard the term scared money. It's real, and it's, surpri it's, it's surprising how many people play with scared money. They're petrified by the thought of losing, and they make bets which they consider safe, 
which is normally the six and the eight or sometimes the inside, okay, instead of what's being rolled, all right? So when you're pressing, if you're on the six and eight and it comes time to press, you don't necessarily have to press the eight. Press something else that you're hitting, okay? So, all right. <clears throat> So basically, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the casino. Scared money can be simply defined that money that is inadequate for plain purposes. Just as any business that are undercapitalized usually will end up in bankruptcy. Most players who do not have enough of a bankroll will end up as losers, no matter what their skill level. Okay, so remember, you must be capitalized. You, you got to have balls to play craps. You can't do same bet, same bet and expect to win. You won't. Okay, and if you're sweating because you got a $30 uh, six and eight, you might want to switch fucking games. All right, just saying. Okay, all right, that's number eight. All right, number nine. We use a money system that puts us on the plus side every month. Remember, you guys, your bankroll serves two purposes, okay? You have the strength of reserves meaning you have your bankroll in your pocket ready to use it if you need to. Okay, so you have the strength of your reserves, which is your bankroll, and you have the power to resolve. So in other words, you have your bankroll, then you get the dice right back. Now you have the, uh, the power to resolve by going to a level two or increasing your bet or, uh, you know, regressing whatever you want to do. Okay, so and the way we play is the power to resolve is only one or two wins to get you back on the plus side, okay? I put a tape out a couple of years ago. It's on YouTube. It's called uh, Stri Advantage Dice Control Strictly Business, and it talks about my 27 and 3 formula. And basically, here it is. I'll share, I'll share with you what it is. So let's say, come on me, sit here. So let's say... <clears throat> You have a, a total bankroll of $3,000, okay? You're going to divide that $3,000 into three bankrolls of $1,000. So you're going to buy in with that $1,000, you're going to play your $1,000, and you're going to look to earn 20% on that. That 20% is going to equal $200. We base everything on a 30-day month. So if you win, I, I told you it's called the 27 and 3 plan. If you win that $200 a day, for 27 days, that's going to be $5,400. If you lose your three bankrolls, that's going to be $3,000. You're going to net $2,400 over and above. That, on $3,000, is an 80% profit. Okay? Show me where else you can get 80% playing craps. Okay? All right. So that's how you do that. So listen up, everybody. When you get money out of the way, you become a better player, you become a better person. Understand, everybody can have a losing day, but you shouldn't have a losing month. If the way you're playing now, you're having losing months, you might want to look at changing something, okay? So, all right, uh, that's number nine. Last one, and the most important, is discipline. None of anything what I discussed uh, means it doesn't mean anything without discipline. You're just wasting your time, okay? You need money, you need strategy, and you need discipline. That's how you win in the casinos. You need all three, but discipline is the foundation and the soul of professional gambling. And without it, you, again, like I said, you're wasting your time, okay? After discipline comes strategy. You can have a fortune in gold, but it won't, you won't earn anything if you don't have the methods and the will to see it through. So, Become a method gambler, you'll watch your income go up. Finally comes the money, all right? Necessary as it is, it's the least significant of the three because anybody in the world can get money, all right? But few know a strategy that will work, okay? And, and fewer have the discipline to make it work, all right? So remember that. Okay, I think we're done. So there you go. That's 10 steps to becoming a winner at the craps table. How many do you follow? Ask yourself that. Are you a math wizard or are you advantage craps player? Okay? It's a new day at the craps table, everybody. There's a lot of different craps pros out there flooding YouTube lately. And for the most part, when it comes to the dice sets and the betting, they all do pretty much the same thing. We don't. Okay? I will show you how to make money at the craps table. 
I'll show you how to overcome the obstacles that you see every day at the craps table I'll show you, uh, that are built into the game that you can't do anything about. I'll show you how to beat the random roller and still get multiple wins, okay? I'll show you why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and you'll do more in less time. So, you can make a great living playing craps, so it's time to build your dreams, all right? So anyway, uh, we're done. If you need me, call me. I'm around. I always love hearing from everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. And remember, feels good to win. You take care.